Uh, what an amazing, amazing crowd. What an amazing day. And my friends, in 31 days, this state, starting with Butler, is going to turn red and we're going to send Donald Trump back to the White House. I'm so proud on this historic day to welcome President Trump. I know he's in route right now. He should be here in about, I don't know, a half an hour or so. But it is this community, this community has been so good to me and President Trump. This community is so strong and so resilient. And my friends, we are so proud to stand here in Butler, Pennsylvania, ready to take back the White House ready to take back this country. Now, 84 days ago, of course, on this very field, an assassin tried to fill our hearts with terror. But we're here to say we can't be intimidated. We cannot be stopped. We won't be denied. We will make America great again, and we're going to do it together. Now, my friends, I, I know you'll join me in saying we're going to remember July 13th, 2024, forever. Many of you were here, and it is a testament to your courage and your patriotism that you're here again today. Now, you heard the shots. You saw the blood. We all feared the worst. But you knew everything would be okay when President Trump raised his fist high in the air and shouted, Fight! Fight! Fight. Now, I believe, as sure as I'm standing here today, that what happened was a true miracle. And on that day, America felt the truth of Scripture. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. I truly believe that God saved President Trump's life that day. And I believe that God is with us right now and watches over this incredible nation every single day. Now, there, there are so many people here, so many people we're honored to have. It would be impossible to name all of them. I see the great Sean Parnell over here. Sean, you're a hero, man. You were here on that day. We're joined by many first responders, elected officials, and other distinguished guests. And as we gather on these grounds, once again, my friends, we especially thank God for the two great Americans who were wounded and survived in July. That's David Dutch and James Copenhaver. God bless you guys. Now we pray for their full and complete recoveries, and we're honored that David and his family were able to join us today. Let's give a round of applause to David. God bless you, and God bless your family. But our hearts are heavy with sadness, knowing that there's one hero who's not here with us today, and that's, of course, the great Corey Coppertori. We're never going to forget Corey. We're never going to forget his heroism that day. And I want everyone to join me right now in sending our support, our respect, our love to the Compertory family here with us today. We love you guys. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for loving this country, and thank you for not giving up on it.
Now, after the heartache of that day, our nation hoped to turn a page. We hoped that our opponents would remember that before we are Democrats or before we are Republicans, we are Americans. But sadly, our opponents have not heeded Abraham Lincoln's words and listened to the better angels of our nature. Even after that terrible assassination attempt that took one man's life and nearly took many others, they continue to use dangerous, inflammatory rhetoric. The media has continued to call Donald Trump, the guy who actually won his primary, a threat to democracy. A Democrat senator called Donald Trump an existential threat to our democracy. Kamala Harris said that he was attacking, quote, the foundations of our democracy. And I think I, you all will join me in saying to Kamala Harris, how dare you talk about threats to democracy? Donald Trump took a bullet for democracy. What the hell have you done? The truth is that Kamala Harris and her allies, they attack Donald Trump in order to silence us, we the people. They have declared war explicitly on the First Amendment to the United States Constitution. Kamala Harris proudly says she wants to censor the Internet. And Tim Wall said there is no guarantee to free speech. What do we think about that? But we all know, my friends, we all know that censorship is only the first step. Just look at everything they've done to President Trump. First, they tried to silence him. When that didn't work, they tried to bankrupt him. When that didn't work, they tried to jail him. And with all the hatred they have spewed at President Trump, it was only a matter of time before somebody tried to kill him. And that's exactly what happened, not just here in Butler, Pennsylvania, but just a few weeks later. In Florida, three weeks ago, while these guys still go out there and attacking him as a threat to democracy, another gunman armed with an AK-47 style rifle tried to finish the job. In fact, before the gunman in Florida tried to kill Donald Trump, he wrote, quote, democracy is on the, on the ballot. The exact same words that Kamala Harris wrote after accusing Trump of being a dictator only days before the first attempt on his life. But for all of those watching at home, and for all those who might be undecided in this crowd, though there probably aren't that many undecided voters in this crowd. I, I want to say, you know what's so incredible? You know what's so incredible? It's how Donald Trump responded to all of this. Because despite being shot here in Butler, President Trump immediately called for national unity. And I'll never forget, my friends, what he told me after the second assassination attempt. It was probably the first person that he called that Sunday. And I was sitting at home with my son in Cincinnati, and he said, J.D., they tried to do it again. I said, they tried to do what, sir? He said, they tried to shoot me again. And at first, I was in disbelief. I did, I think, immediately my thoughts went to him and how he was doing. Of course, he was physically okay because he was calling me, but I said, sir, are you doing okay? And of course, President Trump and his President Trump way said, yeah, I'm, I'm doing fine. You know, I'm a little pissed off because I was about to make a dirt birdie on the sixth hole and they wouldn't let me finish. But it made me think, it made me think about the leadership qualities we wanted a president of the United States. And so I'd like 
to ask you, who would you rather have facing down, Vladimir Putin and Xi Jinping? Someone, someone who is afraid of interviews with the friendly American media? Or someone who faces down two assassins and returns triumphantly to the very place that he got shot? Now, some of you may have seen that I had a little debate with Governor Waltz a few days ago. And I have to admit, I may be the only person in Butler, Pennsylvania that feels that way, but I feel a little bad for Tim Waltz, if I'm being honest with you. Because Tim Waltz has to defend the indefensible. He has to act like Kamala is going to drive down inflation, bring up wages and bring back jobs and restore peace, the very peace that she destroyed. Well, I hate to break it to you, Tim, but everyone knows the truth. Kamala caused every single one of those problems because Kamala's day one in the White House was 1,400 days ago. Never let her lie to you and pretend that she's going to do something great. She's been in power for three and a half years and she hasn't done a damn thing. And I, you know... I, I, hate, I hate to say it, but Kamala's record of failure is somehow only getting worse. Just a couple of days ago, I visited an area of our country ravaged by Hurricane Helene. The Appalachian region of Virginia, and we know the Appalachian region of this country has been left behind and ignored by a generation of American leaders. But what started out as a natural disaster is becoming a man-made disaster. When Appalachia was underwater, remember, President Biden was sitting on a beach and Kamala Harris was at a San Francisco fundraiser. That is not leadership. That is a disgrace. And now we're seeing reports that deployments of the military and the National Guard are moving at a snail's pace. My friends, who the hell is running this country right now? Because it sure isn't Joe Biden. It sure isn't Kamala Harris. The Harris administration has given billions of dollars to foreign countries and illegal aliens. But now they swoop in and they promise $750 to American citizens who have lost everything. To everybody watching, to everybody at this rally, I want to say, I promise you, when Donald J. Trump is back in the White House, we're going to have a president that puts America first. We're going to ensure that emergency funding goes to American citizens and not illegal aliens. We're going to create record prosperity with low inflation and rising take-home pay. We're going to secure that southern border, stop the drug trafficking, and send illegal aliens back home where they belong. We're going to drive down the cost of housing, drive down the cost of gas, drive down the cost of groceries, and we're going to clean up our streets to make America safe again. And whether we agree or disagree with you, we will always defend your God-given right to speak your mind without fear of censorship, violence, or persecution. But to everybody struggling, I want you to know that though our country has, yes, been through some hard times over these past few, your, few years, I want you to know that help is on the way. We have, think about this, the most generous people, the most abundant natural resources, including some great energy right here in the state of Pennsylvania. We've got the hardest workers. We've got the best values. All we need to restore American greatness is leadership that is fit to serve this country. So more than anything, I'd like all of us to leave this incredible community with a message of hope. Because I honestly believe that what happened right here in Butler is a metaphor 
for the United States of America. In this land, we may get knocked down, but we get right back up and we keep fighting because in America, hope is never lost. We may face enemies who seek our demise, our destruction, and even our death. They may try to crush our spirits. They may try to convince us that victory is impossible, but in America, nothing is impossible. And as long as that flag yet waves, and I see it's doing it today, there is no trial we cannot endure, no obstacle we cannot overcome, and no defeat we cannot turn into victory. On this field, at this exact spot nearly three months ago, we thought President Trump was going to lose his life. But God still has a plan for him, just like it's, he still has a plan for the United States of America. We, this movement, we have so much left to accomplish. And after the dark nights of trial, when the sun rises again, our flag is still going to be there, and nothing will stop the United States of America. So I want you all, I know he's not, he'll, he'll be at it in just a little bit, but I want you all, when Donald Trump comes out here, to give him a true Butler, Pennsylvania welcome. Because with Donald Trump as our leader, we are going to take this country back. We're going to make the American dream affordable again. And it's going to start right here in the great state of Pennsylvania. God bless you, Butler. Thank you for having me. And we are going to take this country back. I love you.